Welcome to Anti-Woke and Autistic. Have you seen this by Tess Holiday? So I'm at the doctor's right now, and it was the first time that I have ever had a good doctor's visit. But we did my blood work. Everything was fine. Literally no high blood pressure, no high cholesterol, nothing. And the doctor was like, yep, you're, you're good. <laughs> like, I have an upper respiratory infection. So the doctor says, yep, you're good. What exactly does that mean? Tess thinks it means she's overall healthy. The doctor probably meant good as in your blood work is good. And I'm sure that's exactly what the doctor meant. And if that's what the doctor meant, he should have clarified that's only what he meant when he said you're good. She went in there for blood tests because she has a respiratory infection. And of course, they're going to take blood work if you have a respiratory or symptoms of a respiratory infection. So when the doctor said, you're good, he surely meant, well, you have this infection going on. The blood work doesn't indicate anything more serious like lymphoma or some other really serious disorder, disorder that could mimic the symptoms of a respiratory infection. I'm sure the doctor meant that rather than you are completely, completely, completely healthy. Tess and people who think like her in a deranged fashion believe that if you have good blood pressure, good blood work, good cholesterol numbers, you're healthy. No, it doesn't mean you're overall healthy. If you're morbidly obese like Tess is, and you have good blood work, there's two things to consider. Number one, what's your blood work going to show? What's your heart rate going to be? What's your cholesterol and your blood pressure going to be in five or ten years? Number two, I, I'm assuming maybe the blood work also included something for diabetes. I, I don't know if it does. She didn't say it did. I don't see why it would if she's going in there with a respiratory infection. The diabetes test, the A1C or the fasting glucose test are completely separate. So I don't know if she had those or not, but that's actually beside the point because a blood test does not show the destructive damage that obesity does to the knee joints. The type of tests that tests had blood pressure, cholesterol, things like that, do not test for risk of blood clot in the future. These blood tests that tests had don't measure or say anything about the risk that obesity causes, the increased risk obesity causes for certain cancers. There's about a dozen cancers that tons of research have strongly linked to obesity. Obesity is actually considered a driver of certain cancers. For instance, one of the pathways for that is that having a lot of big fat cells, big, big fats, everybody has fat cells, but when you're obese, your fat cells are big. And if you've been fat since childhood, you have many more fat cells built up when throughout your childhood of being overfed. So if you have a lot of fat cells or if you have a normal amount of fat cells, but they're huge, and so as a result, you're fat, you're obese, you have a lot of estrogen. You have excess estrogen in your body, and estrogen can drive some cancers. Estrogen, having an overly estrogenic body is very unhealthy, and there are other pathways that obesity drives cancer. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I'm stating the facts. Look it up. Ask your doctor. Look it up. Obesity is a driving force behind about a dozen cancers. These blood tests that tests had in no way predict or indicate any kind of cancer risk. Lipid levels, cholesterol, LDL, HDL. None of that says anything about risk factors or causation factors for cancer related to obesity. Their tests for the heart, maybe blood sugar, their tests for blood pressure, heart rhythm, maybe she had an EKG that showed normal heart rhythm. None of that has anything to do with the dangerous conditions that obesity causes or strongly causes risk factors for increased risk. This also includes 
back pain, chronic pain throughout the body, difficulty with mobility, difficulty with moving quickly, quick, fast changes of direction quickly, getting off a floor, getting off the floor to your feet without struggling or have to pull up on a piece of furniture, going up and down a staircase, or quickly running from run from one room to the other without panting and being exhausted, being able to do yard work, gardening, and just run around all day without feeling beat up or sore the next day. All, all those things are caused by obesity, getting winded easily, obstructive sleep apnea. There is no blood test in this universe, well, at least on this planet, that measures or detects obstructive sleep apnea. So you could have obstructive sleep apnea even though your blood work is perfect. The only way you can measure sleep apnea, if you if you have sleep apnea, the only test that will show it is a sleep study. You have to be asleep, obviously, in order for sleep apnea, apnea to be identified and diagnosed. Again, this is a fact. I don't need to be a doctor. Look it up. Obstructive sleep apnea, obesity is a major, major cause. It's not the only cause, like for instance, drinking alcohol before you go to bed, smoking. There's other causes, a naturally narrow airway, a big tongue. But if you're fat, that alone can cause obstructive sleep apnea. And these blood tests that tests have do not show OSA. She wants you to believe. She's healthy because a few blood tests came back normal. Just one look at her and you know she's not healthy. Obesity causes miscarriages. It causes infertility. Oh, so many other things. It causes an increased risk of complications during surgery. It causes, it's, it's a causative factor for gestational diabetes or diabetes while you're pregnant. It causes kidney disease. It causes liver disease. It causes digestive problems. These tests that Tess is bragging about, hey, that's a tongue twister. These tests that Tess is bragging about, they don't show digestive problems. They don't show reflux disease. They don't show liver disease. She didn't say anything about a liver panel. She didn't say anything about kidney tests. She's just talking about these few two or three tests relating to the heart, cardiovascular system. Those tests do not show anything about liver or kidney health. Obesity causes, it could cause an increased risk for urinary tract infections. Again, these tests are not capable of showing any risks for urinary tract infections. Obesity increases the risk of dementia. Again, these tests don't show anything related to that. They don't measure for that. In short, obesity causes a shit ton of serious medical conditions as well as other conditions that are are not serious but they could be very very inconvenient such as plantar fasciitis which is heel pain that could actually be severe enough to be debilitating obesity causes all these things and these blood tests could be perfect but they don't they're not indicative of whether or not you have risks your obesity is a risk factor for any of these other diseases. So the fat acceptance crowd needs to stop boasting about how perfect their blood work is, their basic blood work. I'd like to know how tests would do with a cardiac stress test. What would her echocardiogram be like? You could have normal blood work, but an abnormal echocardiogram. You could have normal blood work, but drop from a heart attack the next day. It doesn't matter how normal somebody's blood work is if they waddle when they walk. If their legs, if the alignment of their legs are visibly abnormal from the excess fat, how can you be healthy? Think of all the weight bearing down on your musculoskeletal system. The human body was not designed to carry so much weight. A woman is not supposed to weigh at a number that begins with a three or even a two unless she's really tall, really tall. How well could Tess walk a long distance in the heat? How long could she hold up 
walking, a hike, stepping over things, walking inclines, walking downhill, walking down a rocky path. Can you imagine Tess with her normal perfect blood work walking down a path that's downhill and full of erratic jutting rocks like on a hike? Can you imagine how slow she'd go? All that mass would be such a major encumbrance. Who cares about blood work? Blood work is very relevant, of course, when it's not normal. But if you have normal blood work, it doesn't mean you're healthy in other areas. Yes, it's reassuring to know that your cholesterol numbers are in a normal range. It's reassuring to know you have normal blood pressure. It's reassuring to know that your resting heart rate is normal. It's reassuring to know that the doctor hears a normal heart through the stethoscope. That's all reassuring for those particular tests, for what those specific tests are testing for. But you cannot use those tests to say you're overall healthy. Imagine tests or any of these other fat influencers like Mary Fram or Marissa Matthews walking down a rocky, declining path, they would not, they, they, they'd fall within 30 seconds unless they went as slow as an ant. Imagine them walking up a hill, stepping up stone, big, big rocks, you know, like some paths are man-made with rocks or steps that are made of big rocks and stuff. Imagine them or what if it's just grass? Some some hiking paths are are mud or dry mud or grass, whatever. Just imagine them walking up a grade for let's say ten minutes straight. They would be they would feel like they were dying unless they do hiking on a regular basis. There are obese hikers out there. There are morbidly obese hikers. But we know people like Tess and Mary Fran and a lot of these other morbidly obese influencers, they don't do anything like that. Now, you take a slim person or a person of regular weight in the regular weight range who doesn't hike, and you put them through the same types of routes, they're going to do significantly, significantly better than somebody Tess's size. Why? Well, it's obvious because they're carrying 140 pounds instead of 340 pounds. They're carrying 130 pounds instead of 230 pounds. It's physics. It's gravity. It's common sense. Imagine somebody as big as Tess trotting downhill. Impossible. She'll, she'll just flip right over and create a crater. Blood work is nice when it's normal, but see it for what it is. Specific tests to measure for specific things, but you've got the whole rest of the body to consider. The whole rest of the body, the pressure on the bones. Blood tests can be normal while your bones are still under pressure. Blood tests can be normal. These types of blood tests here can be perfectly normal while your organs are being suffocated and squashed by a load of excess fat. Yet these influencers, the fat acceptance quitters cult, refuses to believe it. They're in denial. They're delusional. That's it for today's video. Have a wonderful day.